It's Cindy here from Women on Purpose. Uh, I hope everybody's doing okay out there. And today I thought I would talk about negotiating with people with less power. Um, and make sure everybody, as you join on, you know, say hello. I haven't, I did that during my Facebook challenge, but I haven't been doing it lately. So make sure to just say hello, let me know that you're there and let us know where you're joining from as well. So as I say, I want to talk today about negotiating with people with less power than us. I did a piece on how to negotiate with people with more power. I uh, did a piece on how to negotiate with friends recently. Uh, and let me know if you've read that. If you saw it, just type yes in the comments there. Let me know. And again, whether you're watching us live now or uh, if you're watching the replay, that's, that's cool as well. Just uh, make sure to stay engaged and let us know that you're there. So in our, my current situation, you know, as I'm navigating and our family is navigating through this broken mental health care system, and I've really been reflecting on some of the rights that we've given up so easily during COVID, uh, it struck me that maybe it's time I ought to address how to negotiate with people with less power. You know, I'm focused on and everybody's always asking me about negotiating. How do you negotiate with people who've got more power than you? And that's important and I've addressed that. But I think we often ignore the flip side of that as well, which is, you know, making a decision about how are we going to show up? How do we handle when we're negotiating with somebody who we perceive at least to have less power than us? And let me ask you as well, is that something that you even consider typically? And let, again, let me know in the comments here. Do you actively consider how you want to show up when you believe you're negotiating with someone who has less power than you? I'll be interested to see. Let's see if you guys are, how honest we can be with ourselves about that. Just let us know in the comments. Because uh, one of the things I, you know, obviously given our current situation, it really has struck home with me. Um, and it made me take a step back and think about my whole sort of art of feminine negotiation and some of the things that led me to even start that. Because when we approach negotiations from a place of competition, where it's a winner take all, I win or you lose, right? So the stakes are it's all or nothing approach. Dare I say that more masculine approach, it does a disservice to everyone. And sadly, that's the traditional approach that we've been taught. To the extent that we're taught how to negotiate at all, we're led to believe everything we see and particularly today on the media, all of our entertainment, you know, I mean, I've been watching the show Scandal with my daughter recently, somebody had said, and you know, it's a great show and it's well done, but man, it can strip your sense of decency away where it seems like the bad guy always wins, the person who's prepared to do whatever it takes to win, to exploit every weakness, to take advantage of people, however good. You know, that's the kind of role modeling that we're seeing today. And yeah, you may get what you want in the moment, but at what cost? And even for me, I confess, as a lawyer, you know, for 30 years, uh, when I used to bring that barracuda approach to the law as well, did I do great? Yes. Did it, you know, did I get great results? Absolutely. But at what cost? And was it necessary? And looking back, what better opportunities did I maybe miss out on by taking advantage of that and going for all, right? And I see, hey there, Jade of Barb and Elaine, good morning, and thanks for participating and letting us know. And you may think I'm going to be getting overly dramatic here, but I, I often like to give some more extreme examples as a wake-up call for people to really think more deeply about these issues. And if you think back during all of the generation after generation in this world with slavery, you know, where we had um, people being taken advantage of, being oppressed, uh, based on the color of their skin, based on this perception that they had less power. Think of the Holocaust again, where you had entire populations of people who were being oppressed based on various factors, whether it was their religion or sexual orientation. And those groups often get forgot when, forgotten when people talk about the Holocaust as well, but groups of people who were perceived as having less power. And I want to remind you, think about that. It wasn't that those groups actually had less power. It wasn't that they weren't powerful. They were stripped of their innate power. They were stripped of the gifts they had to offer. It was oppression, pure and simple. And when you think about it, that kind of oppression comes from a place of fear. It comes from a lack of courage. You know, we laud it and reward it and we hold it up on a pedestal. People who get what they want at all costs. 
But that kind of tactic almost always comes from cowardice, from a lack of courage, from a lack of belief in your own power. And if you think even with children, when we try to exert power over our children, that comes from a place of fear and a perception that they have no power when in fact we're the ones who take away that power and strip them, set up the circumstances to deny that power. One of the reasons I practice labor law as well and social justice, workers through history who've been denied and oppressed and stripped of their power, that comes from a place of fear, a lack of courage when we try to negotiate with people who we perceive to have less power and we try to take advantage of that. And more experience, more recently from my personal experience, I'm getting firsthand knowledge of taking a look at our mental health system, our very broken mental health system. And again, that oppression, that taking advantage, that negotiating with people who we perceive as having less power and we use that to justify stripping them of their power. And I'd invite you all here, share any examples you can think of. I've listed some extreme examples, some not so extreme, like our children's perhaps a less extreme example, slavery in the Holocaust, more extreme, our mental health care system. What are some examples you can think of? And please share with us in the comments where we perceive people to have less power and we go into negotiations, maybe taking advantage or with an approach where we continue to try and strip them of that power. And again, feel free to just pop that up there. For me, I'm seeing that, as I say, firsthand in our experience navigating the mental health care system with our son currently. Um, you know, we have laws that are supposed to be in place to protect people. But when those people are perceived by the people who are supposed to be their caregivers as having less power, if we allow that tendency to want to take advantage of them, what does that make us? What does that do to our whole system? What does it say about us and how we become? And how do we make decisions ourselves when you're having negotiations. Maybe you're a healthcare worker, maybe you're uh, a ch an educator of children, whether it's negotiating in your relationship with your intimate partner or your kids or in the workplace. How do you show up when you're negotiating with people who you perceive to have less power? Because I got to tell you, it's been pretty horrific sitting back and watching and even with me, advocating so vociferously at every step when they believe they can take advantage in that hospital for two weeks now. And in fact, today is supposed to be the deadline beyond which they can't keep him in the hospital without his consent. He was supposed to have his hearing yesterday and they set up the circumstances to end up having him show up without representation in that hearing yesterday and lo and behold, end up adjourning it when he raises that issue at the beginning of his hearing. Wouldn't allow me in and ended up setting up the circumstances to effectively deny him of his representation by jerking him around all week. He's trying to call, they control the phone. Not allowed to have his own cell phone in, his, in the hospital. Not allowed to have the computer that I took him. I shared the experience where the nurse physically wrestled it out of his hand, stripped them of any communication means. They control the phones in the hospital whether they allow them access to be able to call their own attorney or try to even find an attorney, keep giving different information every day. And, as, and then ironically using that to justify, needless to say, he stops trusting when one day they tell them, here's who your lawyer is going to be and don't give him a phone number and the person doesn't call. And the next day, here's who your lawyer is going to be, different name, different number, come back later, even up till 15 minutes before the hearing, I even called personally and was told that his lawyer was going to be showing up uh, within five minutes, which would only be 15 minutes before the hearing. Great representation. And it turned out that wasn't even the right lawyer and some other person ends up showing up. So surprise, surprise, when you're dealing with patients with mental health and they end up not trusting and then the powers that be use that as yet further evidence that, oh, Look at the paranoia, look at the lack of trust. Well, yeah, when you have people in positions of power who are showing up in their negotiations from that place of winner take all, when it's viewed as a power struggle and somebody exerts power over as opposed to power with, let me say that again, so you, I want you to be thinking about this for your own negotiations. You always have a choice whether to try and exert power over someone who you perceive to have less power or to choose to engage power with 
where we can get better results and better outcomes. Because look back and think about those groups that I talked about, whether it was through slavery or the Holocaust or even with children. How many times through history do we have to discount groups of people who had incredible gifts to offer, to change the world, to improve the world, to make things better? And the same with mental health patients. We assume that they have less power and we create the circumstances, even though the input they have is sometimes profound and insightful and productive and engaging and can make a difference in the world. You know, I grew up being taught that everyone deserves to be treated with dignity and respect. And in particular, that was my dad's whole philosophy. And he was talking about in the workplace, probably one of the reasons I became a social justice lawyer, that importance of recognizing that everyone has inherent um, value, you know, respecting that and recognizing the power that comes with recognizing and respecting that, the contributions that they can make. Sorry, my phone's going off there, forgot to turn it off. You know, the contributions, the lost opportunities in life when we let the world be run by bullies. And again, the, you know, the TV show Scandal, if you've seen it, is a perfect example of that. So how many people share with me where you've had that experience? And let me just take a look. I'm ignoring my comments here. I'm usually the one sitting in the chair perceiving I have less power. Beautiful observation, Melanie. Thanks for sharing that so much. And never thought about it. Most of us don't. Thanks for sharing that, Elaine. Often I think in real estate, definitely in politics, absolutely, and in scandal. And I think it's really important, and that's why I felt absolutely compelled today, you know, talking to my son yesterday and feeling his pain and confusion and sense of powerlessness and the rage that comes from that, that sense of powerlessness. When you create that, when you strip power away from somebody, you know, it ends up resulting in them shrinking as a version of themselves or stepping forward from a place of rage, neither of which are great options, both of which are understandable. So today I wanted to talk about us for you as well to think about in every negotiation in life and all of life is a negotiation. When you show up dealing with someone who you perceive to have less power, be intentional about that. Show up as the best version of yourself. Employ the art of feminine negotiation. Come from a place of rapport building and empathy and flexibility and intuition and building trust. Come from a place of looking for better solutions. Come from a place of wanting power with to see if that can result in a better end result. And again, and thanks Melanie for sharing, if the, and the opposite as well, if you're the person who perceives you have less power, again, apply that R fit model. Try that rapport building and empathy and ultimately rely on that assertiveness as well so that we don't ever let someone treat us as having less power and recognizing when you're in that place that people who try to bully or take advantage of that are coming from a place of fear, a place of lack of courage, all right? And do you wanna be that person who's coming from a place of fear in your negotiation? And I realize as I'm talking, this may sound preachy and I apologize for that. I probably am a little emotional and close to this given the experience that we're going through right now. Um, I'm at the stage I'm going to start stepping up regardless. I, and I made a conscious decision. I, I shot a video the other day about epiphanies about my grief and making a decision to allow my son to have power even when I disagree with him and allowing him to make the decision, did he want legal representation or not, even though I every fiber in my being screamed against it to allow him to start exerting some power in that situation. And now I see the powers that be taking advantage of what they perceive as that less power. So I'm gonna be stepping up, not to have power over him, to allow him to start exerting his own power in that situation as well, and really fighting with myself, negotiating with myself to respect those boundaries. And that doesn't mean I leave him there uh, feeling powerless, no. And I am gonna start exerting my power in other ways and other forms. And I invite you all to join me, frankly, if you're experienced, as we start speaking out and speaking up together about this, it can make a difference. I'm gonna start taking the avenues that are available to hold the nurses accountable and the doctors accountable and our system accountable, frankly, and the administration accountable and not affording. As I say, today was the two weeks. He is not supposed to be allowed to be kept beyond that. And yet there he is because they adjourned the very hearing that would allow that decision to be made until 
mid next week, which means by default, they've ended up exerting power over him that they had no legal right to exert. So anyhow, didn't want this to be all about him or always all about that situation. I thought the issue was important, wanted to share it. I hope it's given you something to think about. And if this resonated for you, please share it. I think it's important we start getting the word out there. So please share the message so that other people can start thinking about how they show up when they're negotiating with someone they perceive to have less power. Imagine what a different world it would be if people just took the time to ground themselves and take a deep breath and show up with intention about that when we're in these situations. Again, whether it's negotiating with your kids or your intimate partner or with a particular interest group that you perceive to less, have less power in your workplace or whatever, whenever the situation arises for you, imagine what a different world it would be if we showed up with intention to try maybe a different approach, approach that respected the inherent value that everybody had. If we encourage everyone to step into their power, to bring their gifts, to bring their value to the table, think of all the lost opportunities when we try to suppress that, to oppress that, to exert power over instead of power with. That's it for today. Sending you lots of love and light as always. And I hope you share the message. Take care.